Ciao friends! Beth with Thimblehooks. Thanks for stopping by for part two of my sweater vest. And today we're going to finish this up. We're going to do all of the finishing edges. Weave in our ends and I'll give you a few tips and tricks on how to change it up a little bit to make it a different pattern like this one. Has a bigger block here. I'll give you some tips and tricks. So let's get started exactly where we left off yesterday. Okay, so now we've got through the easy peasy ones right here. There's their purple, there's our multi, there's our white, and there are the other purple, which matches up all of these. But now when we get to our pink, that's where it changes up a little bit. Because remember our pattern that we had down here where it's going at an angle? We want to replicate that up here. So the easiest way to do that is that this middle part is always going to be your half double crochets right here. See the half doubles right here? These are always half doubles. This will always be half doubles. So what we want to do is our first line of pink is back loop only, single crochets, of course. As we did with all of the other rows, it's a back loop only, single crochet, one line all the way across of 55. Now that we've done all of our reducing here, there's 55 left. And we want 21 half double crochets in the middle just to match this and to match this. So right here we want between here and here, these are all going to be half double crochets. So what we're going to do is single crochet back loop only and mark stitch number 18 right here. And then single crochet back loop only. 21 total including this one and this one and mark this stitch which I believe would be stitch number 38 and then single crochet back loop only all the way down. So now we're ready. So what we need to do here we have to match up what's down here. It's easy to see. Double crochets here, single crochets here. So we chain one we're up here, right here with the gold. So what we're going to do is chain one and turn our work and can you continue in the other direction but remembering that we want to match up with this right here so of course they're double crochets. We're going to reduce on both ends again like we did before so what we will do here is there's a double crochet two together at this first end so that took away two of our 17 so it's 17, 21, and 17 always going to be 21 in the middle now we're going to double crochet 15 up to but not including this stitch marker. And there's my last double crochet in pink. Now from this stitch marker to this stitch marker is all half double crochets just like we were doing down here so everything stays half double crochet in the pink, big pink in the big green stripes down the center. So there's my half double crochet and I'm going to move my stitch marker because I'll need it for the next row. And now half double crochet is down to and including. Please remember that it really helps my channel when you watch the video all the way to the end. Down to and including the next stitch marker for 21 half double crochets. 20 and in this stitch marker is half double crochet number 21 and we will move our stitch marker. This was double crochet, this is half double crochet, and this is single crochet on this side. So we're going to do the same as we did with the double crochets. 15 singles and the last two stitches are single crochet two together because we're still reducing with while we're using this pink. Fourteen, fifteen, and our last two stitches are single crochet two together. 
chain one, turn our work. Now we are, still want to match up these stitches, so this time single crochets start instead of the double crochets. So we'll start with our single crochets first to match up these stitches, single crochet two together. For a reduce, and then single crochet to the stitch marker. So our two together plus 14 more single crochets. Now we hit our stitch marker, which means it's half double time. Half double crochets from stitch marker to stitch marker, always 21 half doubles to stay in the middle. We don't reduce in the center. So this is easy peasy. Twenty and twenty-one half doubles. Move our stitch marker. And then we have double crochets down to the last two. The last two stitches will be double crochet two together. And our last stitch is double crochet two together. And chain one so we can turn our work. We're ready for the next row, which is easy peasy now because we only wanted to do the two rows just like we did here, just so it matches up. Did a single crochet, two rows of our doubles with the reductions, and now it's just a row of single crochet all the way across to finish off our pink. Make sure you bring up your stitch markers when you hit that stitch because you'll need them for the next row. 50, 50 and 51. There, now we're done with our pink. So we're going to cut that off again just like we did. Snip, go snip, snip and just pull it through. Now we're ready to start our last row of green to match up here. Match up our pinks right here. Match up our pinks on this side. So that means we did our doubles here. This is singles here. Singles here that means that green is double here so that everything evens out very nicely. So we'll attach our green right here. And as always, the first row is always single crochet back loop only to give a nice edge. Make a nice straight line. 50 and 51. There we go. So you chain one so we can turn our work. And remember I told you we were done with reducing now. We're just going straight up. No reductions. But we want to be the opposite of this. These are double crochets. Half doubles always match up with half doubles. And this is single crochet so this has to be doubles. So double crochet. These will be singles. Half doubles. And our doubles will be over here. So no reducing. So we are just going to double crochet all the way to the stitch marker. 1, 14, and 15 double crochets. Now we're to our stitch marker, so those are half double crochets from marker to marker. Half double. Move our marker because we're going to need it for the next row. 20 and 21. 21 half double crochets. Now on the rest of these stitches are singles because doubles were down here so these will be singles. And we are doing this orange part way up at the top. Right here. 14 and 15. Chain one, turn our work. One more row just like that one. So we're going to start with our single crochets with no reducing. So 15 single crochets, 14, 15, 
14, 15, and now our set of half double crochets. There will be 21 of those. 20 and 21. Our block of half double crochets are done. And now our last set right here of double crochets, no reducing. So 15 double crochets to the end. And 14. And our last stitch is 15. Hooray! We're done with the back. We're done with this right in here. For my next trick, we will connect these to each other so we will have a closed outfit instead of all these little flaps. All right, so this is right side out. We want to turn it inside out so that we can connect our pieces and close our shoulders. There, now I'm inside out. You can kind of tell because my stitches right here show a lot more than they do on this side. This is my happy, it's my happy edge. These are not happy edges. So you know that this is the inside, not the outside. So I'll turn my original one inside out and you can see what we're going to do here. We're going to bring these together right up here at a seam and it's going to be super, super simple. All right, so we're going to attach these to each other right up here at the top on both sides. So since this is where my yarn already is, I'm going to turn it so we can work with this. All right, so we'll work with the yarn that we already have going on and we are just going to attach these together. I'm going to use a slip stitch chain one so that we can get into this first stitch and they'll end up being 15 and go through the other side. Do a slip stitch or a single crochet, whichever one you're more comfortable with. I'm going to do a slip stitch just like that one through both sides two, three, 16, and 17. 17 slip stitches or single crochets, whichever you want, because there are 17 stitches on our front flap. Our last row of our front flap has 17 stitches, so we want to do 17 from the outside in. And now I'm done with this one, so we can just fasten him off. Snip! And pull through. And we're going to do the same to the other side, you just need a little bit of yarn. And if you want to make it easy so you don't have to count over, don't need this stitch marker anymore either. Just turn and start from the outside and work your way towards the v-neck. That's a little easier. Then you don't have to be, oh, I missed a stitch. And then you have to frog everything out because you didn't count all the way to 17. So we'll start right here at the very end. And right here at the very end. yarn and now do a slip stitch through that exact same one all the way to the end of your front panel. And 16 and there's our last stitch and the one across from it 17. Snip and pull and now we are connected. So we'll turn it back right side out again. Oh, we're almost done. This is going to be so awesome. I would just have to, uh, all these edges like these, these little ends that are hanging down, I just tie them in a knot. And if it doesn't have a friend to tie in a knot with, then you can weave it in a little bit. But this is what it will end up looking like. Make little knots here and there. Weave it in here and there. Just get everything tied off. Everybody knows how to weave in an end or tie off a knot. So all of these will be covered. So just get them all worked in. Get them all worked in here. So it looks about like this. 
and then we will work on our edging. What we are going to do is with the corresponding edging that you started your first ribbing with, which of this one would be here of course, would be the speckled one that I used in this one. We are going to go around this as evenly as possible, around and around this side as evenly as possible, and around here as evenly as possible. On the arms you want to come up with approximately 50, between 50 and 60. As long as they're both the same it doesn't really matter what the number is, as long as both sides are the same. So you will want to count these. So I'll just give you an idea of what I'm doing and you can start anywhere you want. I'll just start at the seam over by the side. Single crochet. So we're gonna, so we fasten on our yarn and there's one single crochet. And there's another one too. Six, just have them evenly spaced out so that we can begin our ribbing, which is the last part that we need to do, and our sweater's ready to go. So you do that with this color. Weave in all your ends, tie off little knots, get everything to look like this with little knots that we can cover up, and go around your sleeves between 50 and 60 as long as they're the same, as long as they match, and here should be between 70 and 80. So we'll do that. And I'll meet you back here when I have all of these little ends woven in so that it doesn't look so confusing and we will do our ribbing. Okay, we're almost done. I did the sleeves because these are really easy and they follow they follow the border for the neck very, very, very simply. So I'm going to do the neck and then you'll be able to figure out how to do these pretty simply. So we're doing this part right here. Or you can see it in the purple in this one. So we're going to finish that right now. So I did my, went 50 around the edge of each of these and then I did my ribbon. And I did 50 around this side too, of course. 50 around this side because you want your sleeves to be even and then I did my ribbing. Alright, so remember we marked these off quite some time ago and now we finally need them. This is where our markers are for our, for the v-neck. We're going to start right here on the right hand side. Back loop only for all five of these. One, two, three, four, five from our original purple line that was never worked. So what we're going to do is single crochet. We're going to pass it on here and we're going to single crochet all the way around evenly so we have a nice base to work with. But these first five right here. I'm doing back loop only. So let's do those really fast. Back loop only because you're going to work in those front purple loops on the way back down. Alright, so there's our first five. Back loop only. That's easy. So now we have our back loops only and we have five loops in the purple waiting for their turn in a little while. So now we want to work around this neck as best as you can to keep it nice and even. See I did all my little knots and everything. Those are all going to get covered. We want to work around here between 75 and 85 all the way around back to the stitch marker. Nice and even so that they end up looking like. So we can have a nice edging, a nice ribbing that looks like this. So how I do that, I'm just going to give you a few here and then I'm going to meet you back around here. But you just want to evenly just grab a spot and single crochet as many as you can. Between 75 and 85 will be really great. Just evenly, they don't have to be perfect. They never will be perfect when you're working on these offsides. Most of these were double crochet two togethers, so they're going to be a little bit lumpy, but that's basically what you want to do all the way around and I will meet you back here between 75 and 85 stitches total. Alright, I made it all the way around. I think I have 72 stitches here and then plus we want to work into these front purple ones. So I'm going to be right around my 75. So we're into these front loops only. 
Do the exact same thing. Single crochet into those as well. One, two, three, There we go, there's round one. There's only three, so it's really, really, really fast and really, really, really simple. So now we're gonna do round two. Round one was just evening this out a little bit, as even as you can. I got it about 70, I almost have 80, 77, 78 stitches. So there's no set number that it has to be, just as long as this is not tight closed so you can't breathe. That would be no fun. So here's my last stitch. Right here, I'm gonna redo that one. There we go. So we did a double up here. You can see we did, there's our back loop and there's the front loop. Okay, we're gonna chain one and turn our work. And now this is really easy all the way around is double crochet. So in our very first stitch, of course, because that chain one never counts, double crochet. In every stitch that you just made, do a double crochet all the way around and I will meet you back at the beginning. All right, I made it back. Here's my last two until I get back to that stitch marker. Now we are, there's my last two. And now we have these last, our last five, which were the ones we did in our back loop only. Let's just single crochet those so that it doesn't get too bulky right in here. So those last five stitches are going to be just single crochets. Two, three, four, and five. Alright, round two is done. Chain one, turn our work. This is our last row or round. So you can see right here, now we're going to have a little bit of a flap. Instead of working completely in the round, these two are not connected. That will help us lay, make this lay down nicely so it's not all poofy. We don't want it to be poofy. Now those first five that we just single crocheted, we're gonna do that again. Single crochet these first five and five. So there those are, those won't even show. So we don't want them to be too big and too bulky. Now to do this ribbing, it's pretty standard way to do a ribbing. So you probably have heard of this before, but what we're going to be doing is a front post double crochet and a back post double crochet. They're going to alternate. So here's our front post. You find the post right here and go under it with your hook. Yarn over, pull through and complete a double crochet like normal. So now it gives it a little bit of a bump out. Now for the next one, we're gonna do it the opposite way. We're gonna come in from behind like this and go over the post, grab your yarn, pull through and complete a double crochet. So that one pulls it backwards. So it's alternating bump and that bump, bump not bump. So it'll end up looking like this. Nice stretchy ribbing. I just think it looks a little nicer than the standard ribbing. This is for the bottom of sweaters or for the cuffs of your sleeve. I think that this looks a little bit better when you're doing a neckline. So we're going to continue that pattern or that sequence. Front post double crochet, back post double crochet. Every other one all the way around and I'll meet you back at the other side in just a moment. And to my last couple of stitches, there's a back post and my very last one is a front post and that worked out nicely. So now you can see we have a little bit of an overlap right here, right here. All we have to do is finish this off and tack it down. So we're going to finish that off, snip, pull this through, snip. I'm going to take these out now. Finally can get rid of these little stitch markers that have been there since that purple row ages ago it seems. Now you just have to tack this down right at about here. I have a needle handy. I'm just going to thread this. My needle threaded with my tail 
and just bring it over so it's just like we did here hold it over to the edge just pull it over approximately to your purple right in here and just make sure that it is secure so we'll go in to the inside right in here I'm just gonna make sure it's secure weave it in and out make a knot any way you want and just snip 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 now all we have to do is weave in a few ends and of course what we just did here is exactly what you do over here on the arms except you don't have to do the little flap you just keep going you do a round of singles a round of double crochet and a round of front post and back post alternating and you are done look at that isn't it adorable it is so cute very highly popular with uh, my daughter and her group they love tiny sweater vests anything anything crop she loves crop sweaters and crop sweatshirts and crop everything so now we'll go on to what colors did I use because there are so many I started with I love this cotton I use this one often this one is called lime dot that's what I did the ridges in that one's called lime dot so it's exactly what it is it's white with a little bit of a green and a little bit of purple splashes in it that's it next one is I love this cotton sage this one was a mainstays which I don't think they have anymore but I love this cotton also has a baby pink this one is just called daylily pink so it's just really a light pink any light pink the uh, I know that the I love this cotton makes an uh, an easy pink like that a baby pink and for my white here this one white and purple are both yarn bee sugar wheel solids this one is called snow capped and this one is velvet violet so it's just a white and a purple and lastly my little multicolored stripes right here and on the back which I think is funny the name of this yarn is called too pink this is too pink even though it's half of its green most it's mostly green and kind of a tan but it's called too pink but now for this one it took me a while to get these color combinations down of just what are they what are they but I use lion brand 24 7 cotton for this entire thing I love this yarn so I was excited to get to use so many different colors this one is beets tangerine goldenrod purple white and black that's the colors finally it took me a while to figure that out but now I'm so happy that I know which colors they are I ordered a few wrong ones along the way but I use those for other things anyway so it doesn't really matter this one is I love this cotton banana this is 24 7 the lion brand 24 7 creamsicle this swirly one right here is uh, I love this cotton but I always forget what it's called Easter Nova so it's just really everything it's kind of like rainbow it has everything in it all kinds of colors so it really could be used with blues and purples and greens I just went with the yellow scheme because I know that Lily is on a yellow kick right now it's her favorite color and then this is just a white any cotton white that you have will work biggest thing that you need to know about to go from here stripes this way to checks or what are what I would consider vertical stripes technically I think they're vertical stripes not just checkers what you need to do is adjust this from 126 to 128 or anything that's divisible by 8 that's what you really need to know because you need to be able to get these vertical stripes in and make them even do your math figure out 128 divided by 8 and how long everything needs to be so you really just add two stitches to your ribbing on the bottom and you can change that to anything right now I have it set where it was divisible by 3 adding two stitches to it to have made it divisible by 8 so that I could do vertical stripes but really it's the color scheme that makes that makes or breaks the sweater I think one more tip for here for example if you don't want all these stripes if you just want a couple of colors you don't want it to be so busy all you need to do every time you change the color remember 
we did a single crochet at the end of that color and a single crochet back loop only of the new color. Turn those two, add them together. Now, you turn those two into one row of double crochet of your original color and you got it, you got it going on. So everything will be just fine. So example here, if we wanted to do that, would I would not have used a single crochet of white here to end it, nor would I use a single crochet back loop only of the multicolor. Uh, that whole area would be another row of double crochet. I suggest cotton. I would not suggest any of the um, value brands because they're a little bit scratchy and they don't work for clothing very nicely unless it's a really big like flowy cardigan that you're going to wear other clothes underneath. You know, if you're going to, if it's like a cover up kind of, if you're going to wear other shirt underneath it, then it's okay. But some of those value brands are a little bit too scratchy. Cotton is always going to be a bonus. You're going to be happy with cotton every single time. So thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to Thimblehooks and turn on notifications so you know the cool stuff that I've got coming up soon. Thanks. Bye.